We're off to a magical forest where, you could say, pianos grow. Seth Doan is our guide. To the many sounds you'd expect to be produced by a forest, consider including this. The sound of the piano. Because the majestic red spruce growing in the Val di Fiemme of Italy's Dolomites has been prized by instrument makers for centuries, including famed luthier Antonio Stradivarius. We followed in the snowshoe tracks of an Italian forest ranger and Luca Fazioli, a second generation piano maker. Lucas so he says this could be a good tree. This could be a good uh, tree for uh, a resonating wood. Yes, resonating wood. This likely 200-year-old red spruce has good acoustic properties because at more than 7,000 feet, these trees, dormant in winter months, grow slowly. That produces a desirable, even wood grain. It's good because it's long, straight. Straight. Not many knots. No knots. Some of the best planks wind up at the Fazioli's Piano Factory, a couple hours away in the town of Sacile, where they make this sort of instrument that's turned a celebrity into a fan. I have in my contract that I will only play a Fazioli piano. Jazz great Herbie Hancock. It just feels elegant. It feels like a very rich sound. And it just begs you to play it. Do you think this is something that only you, someone with, what, 14 Grammys, can <laughs> hear? Or could the rest of us hear it? The rest of you hear it. <laughs> Fazioli uses a dozen different types of wood in a single piano. But it's that Italian red spruce used for the soundboard that's key to giving the instrument its voice. The grain of this tree have to be exactly straight. Why do you want such straight lines here? Because the sound runs through the grain. In a room of soundboards being seasoned, Luca demonstrated how even at this stage the sound of the piano emerges. Wow. The wood is very light. At the same time it's also very strong. And for uh, the soundboard, th these are the best characteristic. Paolo, Luca's dad, is the Fazioli who gave this piano its name. He started making these instruments 40 years ago. This is the first one he built. The son of furniture makers, Paolo was fascinated by the inner workings of a piano his father got him as a boy, which he says sounded terrible. The piano was not sounding well. <laughs> and you thought, and then, maybe I can fix it? Yes, I start on this way to study the piano, but also to look inside. That curiosity has been built into a business employing about 50 people, who turn out around 140 handcrafted pianos a year. Each one takes nearly three years to build, and the bigger pianos can sell for over $200,000. Special models can surpass half a million. In 2003, Paolo Fazioli invited Herbie Hancock to come to Italy for a tour. He had prepared three pianos for me. I tried the first one, 
which sounded lovely. Then I played the next one, and it had this huge sound, like pow, right? Then I played the third one, and it, it was so sweet. I thought, oh, this will make all the girls cry. <laughs> I said, I gotta have this one. While the piano was invented by an Italian, Bartolomeo Cristofori, around 1700, it was richer countries, including Austria and Germany, that later perfected its production. Why is it so many people have not heard of a fazioli? It hasn't been around that long, so there are a lot of people that just don't know about faziolis, but he can't make them fast enough. That's by design. Paolo Fazioli told us he wants to be able to test each one. And after employees had left, we found the 76-year-old still at work. Some pianos, they are very powerful. Some other pianos, they are more sweet. And then you must follow the, this uh, character of the piano. He follows every step with one notable exception. When uh, they come to bring the piano, the movers, uh, I, I watch in another direction. <laughs> you can't be around the movie. I don't like to see. <laughs> For him, this famous Laurel and Hardy comedy is a horror film. Each fazioli is particular, but what they all have in common is this transparency. American pianist Rachel Naomi Kudo met us at Fazioli's in-house concert hall. It really connects with whoever wants to, wants to play it. It is an inanimate object. Yes, but I believe each piano is alive. And it's through the performer that it becomes alive for the audience. This Juilliard-trained pianist from Chicago demonstrated what this piano can do. An average piano, let's say, maybe the range is like this. I would say Fazioli, every Fazioli, the capacity for expressive range would be like this. Wow. It's shocking. <laughs> Years after playing their pianos, she met and married Luca. You fell in love with Fazioli, the piano, before you fell in love with Fazioli, the man. Of course. I didn't even know that there was a man. <laughs> It adds another dimension to the love affair here that's centered around this instrument and has its roots back in that alpine forest. The pianos come from this one forest in uh, Italy, the same forest where the wood for Stradivarius violins were made. We went there, the Val di Fiemme. Oh, you did? Wow. This special forest has impressed generations of musicians and instrument makers who, in turn, inspire the rest of us. This portion of Sunday Morning is sponsored by Pfizer.